Th thank you and welcome to another edition of uh, C Stand Up's uh, comic review, a podcast, or, you know, how it's going, man. I got Ty Barnett, who I found out uh, through reading his bio and everything, is from my city, Chicago, man. So, wow, hey, brother. That's I, what's up. Yeah. So what high school did you go to? I, 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 I went to Hubbard. I, now, now oh, listen now. Now, Hubbard. I, 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 but now here's what's crazy. I can say Hubbard now because their football team actually started doing better <laughs> after I graduated. But yeah, during yeah. that time, right. I couldn't tell nobody I went to Hubbard. They'd be like, this mom. You know what I'm saying? Right. So they didn't really... Hubbard, man. I was like, yeah. wow, you, you know what I'm saying? Can you read? That's my question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and this was this is a trip though, because we didn't want to go, we didn't want to go there. Uh and I gotta give a uh uh props to my mom because my our, our mom never let us go to school in our the neighborhood we lived in yeah never like we all like we where we where we lived in roseland um the school that was up the street was uh Cal, you i want to say curtis i want to say it was curtis but uh so, so we wanted curtis to go school? there because dude it was curtis uh high school i think it was yeah, i think it was curtis cal you met or, um, right, it was it was right on a hundred and fifteenth, and I forget the cross street. Um, you talking if it's a hundred and fifteenth, you talking about um, Morgan Park? Now this is out in Roseland. This is out in Roseland. I, I can't even think of the name of that school, bro. It's East. Because oh. no, no, uh, there's Mendel. There's Mendel. Not Mendel. No, not Mendel. Because I remember Mendel was. Uh, near like 111th or 103rd, somewhere around there, up okay. off, uh, off of Michigan. Yeah, oh, was it Michigan? That was Michigan. Yeah, and, oh, state. One of them two streets. But um, but the the, the high the, the the grade school it was either the grade school or high school was right up the street, bro. I'm talking okay. about like w five minute walking distance from the house. So me and yeah. my brother was like, "Yo, why can't we go to school here? All our friends go to school there. We can sleep late. We can, yeah. you know." And I'm, <laughs> And our mom was like, nope. So we bu that's not why we got bus. We got bus yeah. to grade school and high school. We went that's to awesome. yeah. and high school. And so we didn't appreciate it until we got older. Right. Now, now, now that we older, we like, thank you, Ma. Yeah. Thank you for letting us go to that ghetto ass school. <laughs> exactly. Because you know, most of the people you was hanging out with before school uh got in, they locked up dead or in some kind exactly, of bro. They're not even functional at times dude I, I saw cats i saw cats when i went back to visit that were bragging about dropping out of school yeah <laughs> right all right bro i can't even mess with y'all yeah, man exactly uh, man. that's chicago for you though boy. yeah yeah, yeah. Some of them schools will swallow people man you know mm -hmm. what I, mean? I still would love to know the name of but that's all right brother so man it's uh it, now give us an idea uh where you started comedy I actually started in Seattle uh, okay. when I was I, I was in the military. That's how I got stationed out in Washington State. So uh, once I got out of the military, uh, my daughters my daughters were st were younger. So uh, I had my kids when I was in Washington State. And so when I got out, which was like about 90, 94, 96, somewhere around there, yeah. I ended up staying in Washington State. And there was a comedy club there, the Comedy Underground. Uh, okay. downtown Seattle, which is no longer there. It just closed like two years ago, something like yeah. that. It was my home club. Right. Um, and so I got on stage. I used What I used to do is I used to go put my name on the open mic list. Yeah. And I put my name way at the bottom, just in case, because I was like, I was, I was still nervous. I was like, I don't know if I really want to do this or not. Yeah. And I would just hope that either I would get bumped or that the show would get canceled because I was getting the closer and closer it got to my name, the more nervous I got. Yeah. But um, so then one time, um, like after losing a really good friend of mine, God rest his soul, um, I was like, you know what, man, I got to stop putting this off. Yeah. I got to, if, if I'm going to do this, man, I got to see if I like this. And dude, I, the first time I got on stage, dude, I was hooked. Yeah. 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 I, I feel you on that. Um, uh, uh, I started off. Uh, out, uh, well, I started off as the DJ at All Jokes Aside. Okay. Remember All Jokes Aside? Yeah. Yeah, it kind yeah. of was on its way out when you started, actually. And um, and so I 
to man, I, you know, them butterflies, like you said, them first year butterflies be giants, boy, pterodactyls mm -hmm. on your stomach. Right. A lot of people don't realize that. Plus, I have seen the worst of the black community. You know what I'm saying? And, and <laughs> at our spot, you know what I mean? We didn't, and then I knew all the comics. So I, I saw, you know, Marcus Combs got shot at during a show in on yeah, and in, in, uh in Roseland. Yeah, um, yeah, this cat named Mark Simmons. Uh, you know Mark Simmons? I know He's Mark. A, yeah, Mark Simmons had a room called the warehouse, I think it was called, and you full of drugs. Dude, for like for like two seconds, I thought she was about to say Mark was the dude that shot at him. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mark is a grumpy dude, but he ain't that type of guy. <laughs> nah, that's, that's my guy, man. That's my yeah, guy. Bro. Yeah, that's my man, man. He's an awesome dude, man. Almost more like a mentor on the mm -hmm. comedy world to me. But we grew up in the same neighborhood. So check it out. So you started in Seattle. And then um, what what followed your, you know, like who was the first, first of all, who was the first dude? to put you on stage and, and uh, you know, hand you a mic, because that's the dude who old school rules say is in charge of your uh, your, your career. Do you remember oh, who that was? Man. I got to think, dude, because like I said, I was at an open mic and I don't really, I can't remember who was hosting the night, but I will tell you my influences. Yeah. Um, my, my national influences were, of course, prior. Yeah. Uh, Cosby before the, Hill. And uh, <laughs> Chris Rock, I read Chris it. Rock. Well, you know what? I think Chris kind of came along later because people don't want to admit this, but Chris wasn't really considered Chris Rock funny until later. Like when he first came out, his first couple tapes were okay, but they weren't like what he is now. You know? Okay, I um, respect that. But but. Uh, but I would say, and then Eddie Murphy, I was, it, and it's funny because I always say Eddie Murphy was an influence early on. Yeah. The more I started doing comedy, I, I looked at Eddie Murphy in a different light. Yeah. Um, in the sense of saying that, you know, Eddie Murphy, comedically, I would not put him in my top 10 of all time. Okay. Comedians? Comedians. Because yeah. people get mad when I say this. They'd be like, no, oh, no, 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 I, I was like, but if you're talking about comedic influences, he's easily number one or two, easily, right, right. historically, because his, his legendary resume. Right, so, well, you're talking yeah. iconic status, right? So if you talk- Exactly, like, that, that's what I'm saying. So, so, so he's there, but like yeah. when people compare it to looking at um, body of work, yeah, I, I can't put Eddie in the same places because I know a lot of people that have done stuff uh, since. Um, I would say uh, Franklin Ajay is another okay. person that, that I looked at because I love this style, bro. I love yeah. the fact that he just kind of took his time and, you know, it was, it was like he's like a jazz player, bro. Just kind of yeah. like it was really smooth. So I, I dug that. Uh, but as far as local people in Seattle, uh, Rod Long uh, okay. was one of the first mentors that I had. Uh, and it, ironically, he actually looked like Pryor. Like okay. I, I used to always say, man, if they ever make a Richard Pryor movie, bro. You need to, <laughs> you need to audition you, you know? for it, yeah. Yeah, you need, you need to be on it. Um, Richard Pryor, uh, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, uh, Rod Long, David Crow was another one. Um, this uh, Debbie Wooten, there's a lot, okay. of, a lot of cats that people have never really heard oh, of. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat, bro. Um, you know, you know so, like, but like, I would, I would watch them, bro. And here's, here's the thing that, that would, would trip me out is that they would get these laughs, bro, that would be huge laughs. Right. Like I ain't talking about chuckles here mm -hmm. and now. I'm talking about like people doubling over with laughter. And I'm like, yo, I'd be looking at them like, how do, how do, I, how do I get that? Like, yeah, how do I get yeah, those exactly. laughs? Yeah. And so that, I would say those people were the early influences for me. That's awesome, man. I'm glad you bring that up because a lot of people don't realize that laugh for laugh, a lot of the funniest cats are, well, first of all, most of the funniest things that happen in a comedy club don't happen on TV. It's rare right. that a video camera's in there, especially back in the day. So I get it. Uh, my favorite, my 100% favorite comic and most influential comic for my life and career was George Wilborn. Yeah. Man, that dude, man, I've seen that dude stand up 
dead bodies. That ain't so funny. Yeah. He is incredible. And uh, and that's because I was his DJ at the comedy club. So yeah, it's things dude, that man. you can't repeat, you can't correct, you can't fix that, you can't manufacture that. It just happened that moment, and you just have to deal with the world and that. So I get it. So, you know, going back to you, because this is about you and not necessarily about any other people, man. So once you got, uh, you know, you started to get influenced by those levels and those types of comics, did you have some level of preparation that you put together that got you to there? Um, I've been able to see that you have the ability that, not like a lot of cats, you have the ability to hit super clean intellectual as well as you can get a little gritty once, you know what I'm saying, like yeah. that. So I love seeing that. You know, and uh, how, how do you prepare for that? What made you be able to touch all those? You know what? Part of it was starting in the Northwest because um, because as a black comedian or a comedian is black. Yeah. Uh, you weren't able to get on these mainstream rooms unless you knew how to work these room, these these audiences. And wow. I always use the trip out because they had one black room. They had all these mainstream rooms there, <laughs> one black room. Right. And I used to say, oh, and you know what? Uh, how the fuck did I think? I'm sorry, sorry. How did I Ralph Porter. Okay. Ralph Porter is one of my biggest influences and one of my huge mentors. And let me tell you something, that ties into what I'm about to say now. Yeah. So, like, they used to have this room, and it was the only black room. And I used to feel weird because the subject matter I could talk about was so limited yeah. in those rooms, right? In that, in that room. But when I go to the mainstream room, I could talk about all of this stuff. I could talk yeah. about being a father. I could talk about just the job I was working, all of this stuff. Yep. And so I remember one time I was doing a show and uh, I don't, I, I think the set was, it was so, so it was all right. And I was feeling kind of bad. This is when I was actually doubting whether I was going to continue to pursue comedy. And I remember Ralph saying to me, uh, he said, hey, man, you got to keep doing you. He said, yeah. man, don't, don't do what these other people think you're supposed to do. Right. He said, do the thing that you think is funny. And that's going to be the thing that's going to work. And man, when I tell you to this day, 25 plus years later to this yeah. day, I still hold on to that. So I, I would be remiss if I did not mention him because he literally is, is a huge reason why I stuck it out and kept going with it. And continue to do it in my style. So to how I prepared, what I started doing, man, was, like I said, I, didn't, I, I never really considered myself a dirty comic anyway. Don't get me wrong, I can curse if I, if yeah. I, if I need to. Yeah. But my writing style kind of came from, I like being witty and, and still getting the point across because no one's going to come from that angle. And, right. and I started writing the stuff that was funny to me. Right, right. And that was a, that was a, once, once I started doing that, bro, it mm. opened the doors to a lot of stuff because I started telling my story. I wasn't just saying, hey, big girls are big. I was just like, hey, <laughs> right. I, you know what I'm saying? I, I was like, this is my story. Yeah. So I think that's what kind of helped me was, uh, and I was very meticulous in how I put jokes together, dude. Like, okay. uh, still to this day, <clears throat> When I'm getting prepared for a set, if it's something I got to do for TV or something like that, yeah, I have a I have a a, a joke laugh meter system that I have. Right. So I'll play the joke back. I'll listen to it. And I'm like, okay, how long are they laughing? Okay, that's one, two, five, six, seven, seven seconds, eight, nine. Seconds. Okay, they're laughing this long. Okay, cool. Are they big laughs or they small laughs? If they're small laughs, they get a star, a small star. If they're big laughs, they get. It. So, dude, I remember preparing for like the Tonight Show. And whatever the set it was, I was listening to the set. I was on a plane. I was yeah. listening to the set, and I'm like, okay, that Joe gets that. Boom, boom, boom. And that just stuck with me. So from that point forward, bro, everything I did, I was right. like, in. I had, in, if I can say anything to any comedians out there, be honest with yourself. Yeah. If you lie to everybody else, don't <laughs> lie to yourself. Right. About what them jokes is. If they're getting real laughs or they're getting baby laughs. So, right. Absolutely. Fantastic, man. That's cool. Now, a couple of them comics you mentioned, especially the last one, I, uh, I didn't get to catch his name. You said it pretty quick, but is he still alive? Ralph Porter? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. He's, st he's still alive, man. He's he's actually living out here in California now, man. And uh, and if you Google him, like you'll see him like he's he's another one of them cats, man, that just never got the shine. 
that that he should have got. But yeah. you know, um, when somebody influences you, like you never forget that. And oh, I'm sure, sure you know this, like, like that that stays with you. Yeah. So so he was one of those people, man. Cause I told you sometimes the advice you can give somebody, because what I don't do is I don't I don't give comedians jokes. I don't give comedians um advice on what jokes to tell. I, I don't say, hey, do this joke or this joke. Yeah. All I tell them is do what you think is funny. Uh-huh. Because those are that that's broad and that's gonna be, but it's gonna be specific to them. Right. So when I got that advice. Mm-hmm. And I saw how much it helped me. I was like, "Yo, okay, I'm good." And dude, I, I from that point forward, I didn't feel bad about not being what they call "quote unquote" a hood comic because right. I never set out to be that, bro. Yeah. When, when when people ask me my number one influence, I say Prior, not just because he's the goat, but because if you look at his audience, bro, his audience was broad like yeah. he's making black white asian hispanic oh yeah i'm like dude yeah. that's right there that's what i want i don't yeah, want it yeah. i don't want just this i want yeah. all of it absolutely and chicago is such a segregated city but it, that oh, it took a bro. long time for us to uh start getting interracial interactions you know what i mean so mm-hmm. i feel you on that and the, and uh as the country embraces stand up the way it's going then we'll be we'll be walking that walk too, man. That's awesome. Yeah. So let's get off into a couple of subjects. You brought up uh, our uh, everybody's mentor, brother Bill Cosby. All right. <laughs> now it's not oh it's not fresh. It's not gonna hurt anybody. You know what was your take on that? Um, I had a few different perspectives on it one let me just say this to anybody watching females are you watching rape assault taking it when it's not given to you is wrong right period For full sure. stop okay with that being said the stuff that was going on during that time i i don't like the fact that they made it look like only cosby was doing it yeah Cosby, Cosby didn't have didn't have a Quaalude factory. He didn't he didn't he didn't have a corner market on the Quaaludes, bro. Like right. he was getting them supplied, just like Hugh Hefner was, just like everybody that was going to that mansion. It was notorious, and you're seeing a lot of stuff coming out now yeah. about the Playboy Mansion now. But Hef yeah. ain't got to face no consequences because he's dead. Right. But the the fact that people, because this is what I always wanted to make clear to people. They said, well, Cosby was just raping these white women. First of all, he ain't never been that funny to where he can <laughs> where he can rape white women in the 60s and 50s and 60s. He ain't yeah. never been that funny. In the 70s, 70s and 80s. 80s. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we're talking about a level of consent that was given uh-huh. by some of these women. Not all of them, maybe, but some of them. Okay. So to me, I kind of felt like. If he did these things, yeah, he should be punished for it because I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that at all. Yeah, and then that's a topic to where like, bro, you Bill Cosby, they just gonna come on, man. They're, they're well, I mean, anyway. in all discussion, I think that there is some level of uh, of accountability that people are not owning up to. For example, let's use the uh, the Playboy Mansion for example. You walk through those gates, you know what the Playboy Mansion is about. Yeah, they had a. a quite a triple billion dollar marketing campaign about sex. And when you start these playmates jumping out of the woodwork saying, oh, I was not, you know, they they profited, dude. Exactly. They absolutely were a part of the, the world in that. And now because the money is dried up, they seem to be jumping out of the woodwork. For yeah. example, in Chicago on um, Sheridan Road, there's a yellow mansion that was owned by one of the playmates. This is one of the most beautiful houses I've ever walked in. I mean, mahogany wood all throughout, different rooms and different levels and all of that. Now, all of these girls had the opportunity to make that type of money and it came with your entrance through those gates. Mm -hmm. So are you responsible for walking through those gates at all or were you just this victim? And then it comes into, because you do a critical thinking podcast, it comes into the mindset of when do we allow women to 
to be responsible for their thoughts and actions fully. They don't need protection. Just like Jada just sold out will. I'm a woman that don't need protection. Yeah. I hit my, my thing on that dude is I believe once you become an adult, you should be held accountable, period. Male, well, yeah, female, it, it, it doesn't matter. And what a lot of people are doing is, and I remember getting into an argument, not on purpose, with uh with a female uh friend of mine a few years ago when this whole Cosby thing was going on. Yeah. And uh and I and and because they brought up um uh what's her name uh Gwyneth Paltrow and, and Julia Roberts and these people yeah. and with the whole Weinstein thing too right and so what I said to her was I said listen again I prefaced it like it's not right to just take yeah. it you, you know but I said I said don't you think that and we're not talking about Julia Roberts just starting out or Gwyneth Paltrow just starting out we're talking about them as A-list actresses already established if they had to go through that gauntlet yeah, uh, of dealing with Weinstein when they were trying to come up and then they come across a young actress that says to them, hey, Harvey Weinstein just called me and asked me to come to dinner with him or whatever. Yeah. I said, Don't you think it's kind of on them too to warn her and say, hey, yo, you might not want to go to this dude's house. You might not want to be alone with this dude. You know what I'm saying? So when I said that, she got upset with me. And she was like, wait, so you blaming the, 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 I said, no, no, no. I said, if you're an established actress or and, and you know that you had to deal with some stuff, yeah. the way I put it was you, you had to fondle some balls. If right. you had to fondle some balls to get that part, and then a young actress comes along and tells you that that same person that made you do what you had to do wants to go out with them i said wouldn't it make sense for you to warn her as the a-list actress to be like yo you might not want to mess with that dude because it, it just makes like like i'm gonna tell you right now let's say me and you been friends for years right right and and and, and there's a club right there's a club up the street and i had a, i had a uh a experience at the club with the booker and the booker was shady the booker didn't pay people he was he's on some bullshit right yeah and you'd say hey ty man i just finally got a call from that club that booker wants to book me wouldn't you want me as your friend to say hey bro hey man i'm just telling you you can work the club if you want to but i'm telling you he he did x y and z yeah he gonna want it yeah you gonna and, want uh, that right yeah absolutely so uh -huh. all I'm saying is I think that I, I don't think anyone's totally guilty and I don't think anyone's totally innocent in this. And, and yeah. I think that, like you said, when the money starts to dry up for some of these people, it, it's weird to me. But also go across the board with all of this, bro. Don't yeah. just go after Cosby. Go after the dude who was just in office yeah. who had 22 sexual allegations against him, including the rape of a 13-year-old. Go go after the dude who almost won office in Alabama, for, and, and 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 Republicans didn't give a damn that he uh, was a pedophile. Go right. after the dude who right now is under investigation for child sex trafficking, and, and and Republicans are holding this dude up like he ain't did nothing wrong. All I'm saying is go across the board if you're going to be upset about this. Don't yeah. just go after one person because right. Cosby is one person. Yeah. And, yeah, that had a lot of layers to it. You know, um, we can't tell which one was true, which wasn't. He had some land that they wanted and, you know, they came after him, all of those things. I do know that, you know, at the beginning, I was like, man, he didn't do that. Girls throwing pussy at Cosby all day. And then by the 60th person, I was like, wow. Yeah, it's, so it's I, hard I, It's hard yeah, to look away yeah, after that. Yeah, I, it's I, hard. I, I agree. But the, the, the other part, and it relates somewhat to... Um, you know, the cat you was just talking about, um, Weinstein, is that um, <clears throat> it happened over such a long period of time and things were different back in them days where they was all taking quaaludes. I think if somebody hands me a pill, because Constantine was the one he went to jail for. That's the only one they could catch him for. And they played with the time and made sure they got it. So it mm. was it, those are symbols of uh those are symptoms of something, and I think it was kind of a um, a witch hunt. 
because the last two weeks before it was going to be null and void, it was too late. To, um, they could get, they got him. They went after him. Yeah. The girl spent the next three years with him. I think I think he just had bad lawyers, man. Because if if I give you a pill in January of eighty seven, and you hang out with me until ninety eight. They can't come back and you can't come back to me. She didn't, he gave her sweaters and she gave him presents Man. and all that. Now, I'm not I'm not vouching for rape, but I'm saying look at it with a skeptical eye on that. And and I don't think we should I, I feel like let's let's not touch this too much more because I don't want it to turn into somewhere people think we advocate for rape. No, no, no. Not not advocating it at all. Because so, so with that being said, let me let me put this back on Cosby. Yeah. Because you are the you are the adult also in that situation. You are the dude in a position of power. With Cosby, with that type of situation, and this is why I say the problem is with him. Hey man, you have to understand the more famous you get, that comes with benefits, but it also comes with drawbacks. One, you marry. Why are you messing around when you marry? That's one. Now that's the major point. Yeah. That, that's that's one. But two, if you're gonna do this, bro, why not? make it as 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 above board as possible because you're already cheating that you already sinning right there well i think that's he, i think he thought he did you know what i mean yeah, I but, but see now, now but, he thought but, he did but here's here's now this is why i say it, it's a, and i hate that i hate that it's a double standard but it's a double standard yeah men and we know this in entertainment yeah we have to walk and tread lighter than women do in this business. Yeah. We have to. Today. Because, huh? Today. Because yeah, but it, it is, argument, even more so, even more so today, but as a black, I gotta be honest with you, as a black man, I've always yeah, felt like, yeah, nah, yeah. man, I can't take Absolutely. no chances, bro. Absolutely. <laughs> Especially when white women concerned. I can't take no chance. Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. I used to, and I remember like this is years ago when I when I first started going on the road. And you know, things would happen after a show. Yeah. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. I would always make sure that it was one, no alcohol. I don't, I don't like, I never liked drunk sex at all. It, it never was a turn on for me. It, it never did anything. But, because I don't want you, I don't want you to say you did not know what was going on. I don't want that. I never wanted that at all, bro. So I was always more hyper vigilant about those types of things because I'm like, I can't have you messing up any of my stuff because of something you say you didn't want to do later. Right. So I was always conscious of that stuff. And the, and the one time that like I almost messed up was like, I remember I was doing a college and at the end of the show, we're hit, hanging out in the dorms and they're passing around a bomb. And so they pass me the bomb. I'm getting ready to smoke the bomb. And right as I get ready to smoke the bomb, a chick pulls out her phone, camera phone, to take a picture. Right, like almost on cue. Like I do yeah. this, is like in luckily, <laughs> right? And luckily, the dude that was there was like, "Yo, right. stop! You right. can't take a picture of him doing that." She's like, "What? It'd be cool to post it." Like that would not be cool to post it. <laughs> you cannot be posting him yeah. doing that. And dude, what what tripped me out was that I didn't think about it. Yeah, in that moment. And so I was like, and that was just weed. Right. So I couldn't imagine in a situation where we're talking about illegal drugs or something that is going to inhibit somebody or taking advantage of somebody. That's why I say Cosby owns every bit of the fault for deciding to do those things. I want to be clear when I say that, ladies, I'm not in no way am I justifying what he did. Yeah. But I am saying that there are adults in all of this. Same yeah. thing with R. Kelly, which is I mean, uh, <laughs> well, that's funny. I kind of knew him, uh, you know, not before, uh, not after the fame, because you know, once people get a certain level of fame, they don't know nobody. But uh, I, I played church basketball, and he played in the church that was uh, opposite us, and we were. I knew him. Um, he was a, he was a freak. Um, I uh, the R. Kelly thing to me, I'm. The this time that the girl, the 13-year-old, that was a 13-year-old girl. That wasn't no, wasn't no question about how young she was in the video. She even had them little brand new cone titties. The little teenagers had. You know what I'm saying? She was a child. <laughs> Skipping forward to after that, 
Right. Those women were adults, I thought. Even if, at, at 17 in Chicago, in uh, Illinois, you're an adult, and they were 17. Now, right. uh, keeping them in cages and all that shit, um, all that stuff I don't know nothing about. But it, it sounds a little voluntary, but let's let's skip over that because that's, you know, that's close to home. Weinstein, man, after I read, and this is a joke I kind of use. I ain't trying to drop jokes on you because that's corny. But Weinstein was a pure rapist. Yeah. I mean, some of the stuff he was doing, a girl come over, he'd throw her on the couch and yeah. eat her out and take her. That was pure rape, especially at his level. And, you know, this is shitty. I'm about to say this shit. It's terrible. But that dude was the Michael Jordan of rape. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. raped some of the most um, noteworthy women on this planet. Angelina yeah. Jolie, all those women that were on his list. I'm like, those are all the movie stars. He made yeah. them. Yeah. But wow, what a terrible soul. How does and, he live with himself? And but dude, that when you're a monster, yeah. you don't you don't you don't think about that type of stuff. Yeah, and so nice. my 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 thing with Weinstein is, did you know him? Have you ever met him? No, 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 never met him. But people like him, yeah. I know him. Okay. And and whoa, you, whoa, it's some more of those types out there that you yeah. Hey, man, know let me about tell you something, bro. Let me tell you something, man. And here's what's crazy about <laughs> about this city and this business. Yeah. Is and I always say this to new people that come out here. I say that your best bet is to find a circle of friends that are your real friends. Yeah, and rock with them. Okay. Period. All right. Everything else is up for grabs. Keep a core of people around you that will got got your back and will will look out for you and that you can confide in and vice versa because yeah. those are the people that will help you navigate through this this cesspool. <laughs> um, but because here's the thing, man, when you have power, sometimes people do good things with power. Yeah. Some people do. So a lot of the, we have examples of that, but then you have other people, bro. Remember I, and you, you to, to go back to basketball for a second, you ever had that person that couldn't really hoop, but they had the freshest shoes. Oh man. I say that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The, the, the ball is theirs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, you know, and the second that they start getting getting uh, getting dunked on and getting you know exposed as not being able to play, they want to take their ball and go. Right. So magnify that times a hundred when it comes to people here. Like, look at Weinstein, bro. Look at how he looked. Yeah, I look know. Look at his look. He I didn't know. look like a dude that could get it voluntarily. No. He looked like a dude that had to take it. He looked like a he looked nasty, bro. Yeah. Yeah. And and the thing about that is. Those types of people have no soul. Those types of people are just like, hey, man, I know the only reason I'm eating this chick out is because of who I am, not what I am, who I am. Yeah. And when you have that type of thing that goes on, it's not, he ain't the only one, bro. I just think he's one of those people that I think people said, okay, his time ran out. And other people said, okay, well... I got power now. I'm Gwyneth Paltrow. I'm famous yes. now. I, I can make my own movies. I can get my right. own movie produced. And I'm Julia Roberts. I don't have to deal with this. So I can start talking about it more. And props to them for being able to do that. Yeah. But he ain't the only one. He's just wow. the one that was the, the highest level exposed. But actually, and, and not to go back into politics too much, but understand something, man. We're talking about a country where a dude was caught on audio tape mm -hmm. bragging about grabbing women by the pussy, Gra bragging about it. Yeah. And not only did nothing happen to him, he got elected. Yeah. So, so when you have, when, and the thing about it, that's the highest office, not only in the country, but in the world, bro. In and theory. they said, <laughs> yeah. exactly, right? Yeah. But then they said, Christian said it. Evangelical said it. Conservatives said it. Women defended it, and was yeah. I saw women wearing shirts saying "Grab me by the pussy." I saw it, bro. Yeah, yeah. So when you have that in the same time frame as you're going after a Cosby or a Weinstein, 
it doesn't make sense to me. Right. Because it doesn't sound like you really are about the Me Too movement. It sounds or about like you're Christianity. About, oh, exactly. Or so about that, goodness, because thanks. that's what we dealt with. You know what I mean? You see what I'm saying? So yeah. that's why I say it's hard for me to totally condemn a Cosby without talking about that dude or talking yeah. about the other dude or talking about the business in general. Because for me, dude, <clears throat> if, if it compromises who I am and how I feel, yeah. I, I can't do that. Right, absolutely. I, I, I can't do that. And then uh, to be honest with you, it may have hurt me in some situations, but it is what it is. You know? Yeah, absolutely. A man has to have a code. That's how we look. Exactly. At it. Okay, so let's flip forward, man. And uh, one of the reasons why I absolutely reached out to you is because of your comments on the Will Smith thing, man. So a lot of people, uh, you know, I don't know, you might, I don't know how many friends you have on Facebook. What Will Smith I, thing? I, what I, happened? What happened? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you got me right there. I was like, hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> you gonna flip on me? Okay. <laughs> you never know, you know, because uh, one of my homies from Chicago went down, uh, went out there to LA, and he was already a political creature. You know, he was very savvy on the don't offend people that might give right. you a check. You know what I mean? He went, and all of a sudden he's popping up when that incident happened, being real politically middle ground. You know, yeah. oh, why are we paying attention to this? And blah. I'm like, man, the world is talking about this. You can't just, you know, whatever. But I hear it. You out there, you might be a little closer to him. You want to get some some work out of uh, Will Smith or Chris Rock. Right. But your, your opinion, came off to me like sound right so i was like let me see if i can get this brother could be on my interview you know we didn't know each other per se you know maybe a comment or something here and there so tell me what uh tell me what your uh first of all how'd you feel about it were you watching it live i uh, was actually uh i was in the shower yeah when it happened and my wife i heard my wife she said oh my god did you hear about this and i'm like what she's like yeah. well Will Smith just slapped Chris Rock. And dude, I kid you not, the first thing I said was, oh, I'm sure they just said that. that I'm yeah, sure they're joking funny. about it. She's <laughs> like, no, I don't think they're joking. She's like, you need to watch this. And again, I'm in the shower. Yeah. And I said, babe, if you make me stop my shower to watch something that's fake, I'm going to yeah. be upset. Right. right, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so I wipe off the shower door. She shows me the video through the thing, and I see it. And again, the, the actual smack, I'm still like, Okay, that still could be, you know, good acting, you know, yeah, yeah. stunt work. Then when I see him sit down and say, keep my wife's name, I was like, oh, wait. Okay, that, I don't, I don't think that's fake. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's Adam fake. Peter was behind him like, oh, my God, what is yeah. going on right here? Exactly, yeah. right? So yeah. so his, I, I had a few thoughts on it, as you as you probably saw. Yeah. First of all, Will was wrong, period. Absolutely, 100%. Um, because what you're doing, bro, is you, first of all, you laughed at the joke. You did laugh at the joke. And then you saw what your wife thought. And then you decided to go up there. Think about everything that goes into what he did. And this is where a lot of people tend to miss it because I see a lot of women saying, well, he was defending his queen. Now, ladies, <laughs> I, 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 have, I have to say this because, man, a lot of y'all tend to jump on this and you want it to be one-sided. There's a king and a queen, uh -huh. okay? Your household should be the number one place you protect. Yeah. Period. Absolutely. So when his queen is out here talking about the entanglements, now, now, now let me just say this really quick. No one wants to be cheated on. Nope. It's a horrible feeling. And most people, 90% of the world have had to deal with it in a private setting, mm -hmm. privately. You, your spouse, your girlfriend, your husband, whatever, whatever, have had to deal with it privately. Right. Maybe a few friends know or whatever, whatever. But when, so when, so when that situation came up, she could have easily denied it and or kept quiet about it right. and let her will in August, hey, let it die out. It could be a rumor. There's tons of Hollywood rumors, man. Tons. Yes, you know, where she messed up is saying, not only am I going to admit to this, I'm going to take it publicly. 
Not only am I going to take it publicly, I'm going to do it on national TV for ratings because she didn't do it for Will. Right. She didn't do it for August. She did it for ratings. That's the only reason she did it. Right. She goes on national television and she tells her husband that she slept with somebody in the house that he bought. Mm. In the house that he bought, not only with somebody, but her son's friend. Do you understand how many connecting things are that are going on there? Oh, hey man, yeah. Let me tell you something. To <laughs> you ever go somewhere and you see something in somebody's house and it stays in your mind no matter what it is? Yeah. Hey man, imagine being in your own home, walking through those rooms and then trying to figure out where they did what. And to the the extra slap in the face was that she said she had feelings for the dude. Yeah. Let me say this to you, ladies. No dude on the planet, open marriage or not, wants to hear that his woman was made to feel good by somebody else. No dude. Right. No dude. Right. So with all that being said, Chris says what he says, the joke, whatever, whatever. Will, hey, man, you could have handled it three different ways. You could have yelled from your seat like you did. People still would have been like, man, can you believe that? Will Smith. Yeah. You hear what Will Smith cursed, man. He must really <laughs> right. Or you, if you had to walk on stage, you could have walked on stage, whispered in Chris's ear, "Hey, bro, let me tell you something, man. That's my wife. I don't know if you know her hair situation, but don't make no jokes about it. Right. I want to smack the shit out you right now, but I'm not gonna do it because I'm Will right. Smith. But I'm a gentleman. But I'm a gentleman. <laughs> yeah. I'm a lady. They still, the, the world would still be like, man, what did he say to Chris Rock? What did he whisper? Right. Absolutely. Right? Or since he said, it's all about Jada, I just want to protect my queen. I want to protect my queen. What he could have done was waited to after the show was over with, took his queen up to Chris backstage and said, Chris, I'm going to tell you again, bro. Don't talk about my wife like that. Don't disrespect her. I don't even, again, her situation is her situation. And he would have saved face in front of his queen and he could have accepted his Oscar and he'd still be the, one of the top box office people and nobody would be talking about the drama. Well, there's two pieces to that you skipped out. Uh, one, when he went backstage, he, would, he could have been like, you're going to apologize to my woman right now in front of all of us and we're going to move forward as friends. Yep. And the fourth thing he could have did is stood up, him and girl, old girl, and left. And they, they would have been looking for him to give him that stuck trophy and then Chris Rock would have looked even worse. Yep. But... He made the choice that he made. Exactly. And, Plus, and do you know where else? You know what else people are trying to do in in in, in uh-huh. getting on Chris? They say, "Well, Chris shouldn't have made the joke." First of all, again, it's a joke. One, it ain't like he said somebody ugly. GI Jane was sexy. I'm not gonna yeah. lie, bro. She yeah. was sexy. Yeah, absolutely. Two, two, if you say, "Well," it, and she laughed. So yeah. wait a minute. So you were you was traumatized by the joke, and you needed that, but then you laughed. And now you're throwing them under the bus by saying that you didn't need protection. Right. So that's whole another thing. Yeah, that, but, but we know that's a that toxic situation that's been slipping right there, out bro. off and on. She right there. The public, so they eat that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah. I, I respect it highly your uh, your post because it wasn't the old regular old post. You know, you, you try to create some dignity around it with your posts. And well, you know what it is, man. It's in in. I got to tell you something, man. I I don't have the strength to be in an open marriage. I don't. Oh, I mean, no, I, 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 I won't be. I won't be. I, I, I don't have that. I, that And props to anybody that can do it. Uh, I think it's foolish because nobody actually successfully really does it. You and that person never bond fully. If y'all have exactly. Marriage, so. so so think about this, man. And this is what, you know, like I said, a lot of women were out there like just like, yeah, also y'all mad because he defending this. Hey man, where where one? I saw one comment, dude, and honestly, I was two seconds from throwing my phone across the room. <laughs> it, just, it just made me that mad. She's like, one lady was like, "Oh, so uh, maybe uh, Will went up there and slapped Chris because he's trying to be the man that Jada wants him to be." And I'm like, "Wait, what about the woman Will wants her to be? Yeah, where, where, where does that come in? Where does that come into play? Because." Women, I, I, I will give women credit. Women share their emotions better than dudes. They are. They're way better at, at saying it and, and, and expressing themselves. 
dudes, we hold a lot of stuff in. One, one because of the stigma of being a man, and this is just what it is. We have to, we gotta hold this in. Don't, yeah. don't, don't cry. So for to see that dude cry, yeah, but she didn't cry no. on that red table talk. She didn't cry when she was talking about the feelings she had for that person. Right. She stood there stone face, bro. Oh, she yes, her soul is dark, man. You see, that's what, what the world tears, is reading. Her exactly, dude, is tears are streaming down that dude's face, right? And she is just standing there. And then again, I don't. You gotta. I don't know any woman, bro. That would sit there and let her dude tell her that he got feelings for another woman and he slept with the woman in their house and it's a friend of the family. I don't know any woman that would he was, sit there and he was be like, living with them for a minute. <laughs> so that all of that is uh all of that is some some dark uh, mono, uh, uh demonic energy that you know hopefully will uh, divorce her and move on because everybody feels that he's you know i feel he's got a good spirit man he just ended up with the wrong person i mean for her to go out publicly and proclaim her love for tupac on the level that she does and and talk about how she stopped tupac from beating up will now tupac was a cool dude and all that but will ain't no sissy no. So it would have been an interesting little battle, I tell you that, because I'm 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 about sure that Will Smith, forget all the rumors, he grew up in Philly. Philly punk, Philly cats ain't punks. You know what I'm saying? So we we'll, we could have seen what was happening. Plus, plus, he, plus, plus he got si plus he got the size. He got the size of two parts. That <laughs> so, too. He uh, got the size yeah. of so so you know, to make it short, I'm not trying to, you know, monopolize the conversation because again, it's about your opinion and you. Um, she professes this love for him and help hold on to that throughout um, walking next to Will. It's disrespectful on a level that I'm not sure uh, Will should have never uh, uh, been open to that. You know what I'm saying? How he dealt and, with it. And I honestly feel like, dude, if he could take that red table talk conversation back, he would. Like yeah. I, I think deep down, because that's that's been the, the person that slapped Chris Rock was the dude that was sitting at that red table talk. Oh, absolutely. According to the world, whether he believed it or not or own up yeah. to it or not, that, the rest that, of the that, world saw dude. that. Because he, in, in all actuality, not trying to monopolize his voice because I like when people listen to the, to the actual subject, but against the better judgment, he probably should have acted like that to her across that table when she said that shit. I'm not yeah. saying he should have beat her up, but he no, should have he should have no. walked off. He should have threw that table off, walked off so that the world can understand his anger. You know what I mean? And, and the table. Kept his manhood. Yeah, flip the table if you're gonna be an asshole. Flip the table, yeah. walk off, or yeah. you know, at least at least talk to her sternly. He he talked to her uh almost fully victimized. Yeah, you and, and do, people don't understand like the spirit of a person how important it is and i would say this man like when you when you commit yourself to somebody and and, and i'll be honest with you bro i was a cheater I, I was a cheater when i was younger i was bro i'm, I'm not even gonna front i and, and i justified every bit of it every bit of it made sense to me okay and when I got older and I had, I had a little bit of time, I had like a few years where I didn't want to be with nobody. I was like, it's just going to be me. I don't, I don't want to deal with nobody. And, right. and I would go out on dates and all yeah. that stuff. And I would say, hey, you know what? We can kick it, but I don't want no relationship. I would be straight up about it. Yeah. And so that time that I had to myself, it really made me think like, damn, Ty, why, why did you do X, Y, and Z? Why, why would you, why, why were you in that, mind, my, that mindset? And when I saw why I was in that mindset, I was like, oh, snap, okay. Well then I gotta rethink how I go, how I do going forward. So I said all that to say this. So when I got married, when I got married to my wife, I was like, I I had already, I, I said, you know what, I'm I'm not doing that. Yeah. You I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going down that, that road because that feeling didn't make sense to me anymore. That, that the, 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 the taking a chance didn't make sense. 
the 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 having to sneak around and trying to figure out what's what and all of this stuff, getting scents off of you and all of this stuff, and making sure you got rid of all of the hairs and all, none of that stuff made sense to me. Wow. Okay. So by the time I said I do, it was like, hey, you have me, you have all of me, and so when I see people like this and like that that relationship where they can say, well, she can say, well, she wasn't. Jada can say, well, she wasn't feeling sexually satisfied. God damn, why would you oh, do that? Oh, man, that, that part, oh, uh, oh, that was so painful. That was so hurtful that she would say that out in public the way she did. And she's constantly said he got a little penis and he ain't rocking it oh, right. And all these come on, man. Oh, hey, hey, wow. do, do you see what I'm saying? So, so when you're doing that, again, you're not doing that for your marriage. Because no. if you were doing it for your marriage, you'd be doing it privately. Yeah. You're doing that for your ratings so people can watch the Red Table talking like, yo, did you hear what, what Jada said about Will and his penis and all that? Right. So, to me, dude, seeing that type of behavior, yeah. and this is why I've been so firm about it, man, because, and I've had women come at me and they said, well, you just don't understand the situation. Like, somebody posted a rap video from somebody and the first line in the rap video was the girl saying, a man's most prized possession, uh, most prized trophy is his wife. And I said, you know what? That's true. So why are you in an open marriage? Exactly. Exactly. And why? What, why? Does it, what does it create when you get involved with that? You know what I mean? So that's such a poisonous world. And it just shows that they have no idea what this thing is about. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're living kind of a weirdly selfish life yeah. anyway when you when you do that, especially when you have children and you teach that line of thinking and you wonder why their kids so, in our belief, messed up. You know, yeah. I mean? we, we as a black community first and then the rest of the community look at their kids and say, those kids are fucking confused and lost. Yes. And that that and it's because of a fruit of a poison tree. And and that dude, you perfectly stated because, yeah. hey man, you know. And, and again, man, Hollywood is weird. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of weird stuff that happens out here, man. That, yeah. that, that yeah. I, I, I sometimes I'll be like, man, OK, <laughs> y'all, y'all, that's y'all. Y'all. OK, I, I right. see how y'all doing it. Right. But there are certain things where I'm like, like the idea of home. It stands out to me, the idea of home, coming to your home. Yeah. And, and, you know, sometimes when you're younger, you make decisions not thinking about your home. I used to always talk to these cats, bro, that would be like, yeah, man, I had this chick over at my crib, man, and I had to get her out before my lady came home. And I'm like, wait, you brought the chick to the house? You, would you, you sleep in the same, with the, huh? you brought her in the same house? Huh? And they'd be like, yeah, man, you know, I just got to make sure. I was like, bro, you trying to get killed. Playing with fire. <laughs> you are trying to get killed. Because the, the idea, and part of this also comes with being older, like that peace of mind. The peace of mind, people don't understand how important a peace of mind is, bro. Yeah. So when I see situations like that, and, and here, here is, a, the, his situation is a prime example that money and fame don't always give you happiness, bro. Because that oh, dude is hurting. He's hurting, man. Oh, man. You can see the pain in both of them. You know what I mean? She's not angry and, and dysfunctional like that because something in her hasn't been broken or crushed. You know what I'm saying? Right. Something, something in her was crushed, and she's transferred that energy into his life and uh, whatever else. Because his mother, you know, when you look at his mother, you can see that she did her best raising him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, as we watched him grow up, as people who watched the TV shows, they did a great job, man. But something happened with him and her, and I, I'm going to lay it on that because I don't know much more about him, and that's what's up. So, And I appreciate you uh, dropping this, uh, you know, these jewels on me like this, man. I don't want to hold you too much further, but I do want to ask you, you know, to give people a little bit more of a um, – an insight on your podcast, the, the, the you know, Critical and Thingy podcast that y'all doing. Where can they find it? Uh, uh, it is uh, it is a project. Uh, me and one of my best friends, Ian Harris, you see right there. This yeah. Guy. Uh, we started this 
man, before the pandemic, dude. So like we were actually in a studio in Koreatown. Like it's like a little small studio. And we yeah. the way it started was we were just like, you know what, let's just get on 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 the mic and talk shit. We just really that's all we wanted to do. And then we started a tour. Yeah. Too. So um it started out just being about regular topics and then somehow man it morphed into politics so okay. and when it started going into politics to be honest with you i was like man i don't really i don't really want to do all that because you know now i got to be all just you know angry because i got to watch the news every day and all of this stuff <laughs> you know so so what we did to be and, and here's what's crazy bro we started out and we could barely get a person to watch the entire show so right, right. Get <laughs> and so I would be keeping an eye on the numbers as we talking, and yeah. I'm still trying to sound like this is the greatest thing. And I'm looking at this like one person for like 30 minutes. <laughs> like, right. You, you mean when you went live with it? Yeah, when we went live, yeah. right? And so yeah. so then um the, a couple of years ago back, because we've been doing this now for about three, four, three, four years. So now, dude, it has morphed into this thing where it's it's it has a mind of its own. And now before we even start the broadcast, bro, we got about 15, 20 people already on the live stream right. waiting for us to go. Um, and so even when we try to uh, deviate from politics, sometimes our core audience who have been rocking with us from the beginning, they'll be like, hey, aren't you going to talk you. about the thing that's going on in Congress or the thing yeah. that's going on here or the cops? Yeah, shit, they're, 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 so they, they bring us back to be like, yeah, OK, you guys, we want to just talk about Will and Jada, but here we're going to talk about this now. <laughs> right. So right. Um, that's a niche audience. That's yeah. We're so, so all looking it's, for it. <laughs> it's, it's been dope, man. It's been a dope process. We got we broadcast every Thursday, 12 noon Pacific uh -huh. Standard Time. Uh, you can catch the podcast. Um, you can go to Facebook and see it, Critical and Thinking Podcast. We have a page. We yeah. broadcast live. We actually have a show coming up in about an hour. Okay. Um, and then you can go on all uh, all podcast platforms yeah uh, google stitcher play itunes spotify all of that just uh type in critical and thinking podcast either my name or ian's name yeah and you can find it in yeah we've been rocking for a while man we go back and see the archives some shows have been uh you know off the rails we had a couple <laughs> people on but you know what i did man really really quick I, the podcast, I use it now to kind of help me therapeutically deal with the knuckleheads out there because sometimes I'll see people who just want to argue on Facebook oh. and, and I can't do it anymore. So what I started doing was inviting them on the show. Yeah. Say, hey man, we don't even have to do this right here. You can come on the show. I'll even pay you to come on the show. Wow. And it, nice. come, come on the show. But here's the thing. When you do that to people and you say, hey man, let's talk face to face. Let me hear your viewpoints. Most people run because all they want to do is this. That's yeah. all they want to do. They want to so hide, it, hide it's helped a lot, bro. Right. Man, that's awesome, brother. And, I, man, again, I appreciate you. And, uh, you know, if you ever come to Chicago you uh, and do, like, uh, one of those people, man, I'll definitely either be in your audience or on your stage, one of the two. It's yeah, been, man. It's been I just, a great I just came back, uh, We just came back from there. My granddad, God rest his soul, passed. And uh, so we came back uh, when it was cold. And then, you know, if it wasn't my granddad, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you forgot what that feel like, huh? Man, hey, dude, I took I took my wife with me. And she was just like, dude, she my wife is short. So when yeah. we got, got out of the car, yeah. that hawk oh, came. Oh, jumped on her, baby. <laughs> That's Chicago. Where yeah, is she from? Dude. What city is she from? California. She's so oh, he's trying exactly. to kill her. You had exactly, a, you insurance papers with you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, man. So like, uh, and now you know. So now we uh, we probably planning the trip when it's when it's warmer. So I'll yeah. definitely yeah. Well, let me know, again. man. We might uh, like um, I got a few. You know, I do I do some production of shows periodically, man. I'd love to be able to put something together with you there. So let's let's do that. You know, we okay. can make some paper. Oh, and shout out to my brother, Monsoon Stara, who's an MC. And you see, look him up. He's on Facebook too, but Monsoon Stara, he has his own podcast called The Shits. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's blowing up there in Chicago. And he's on the radio. I can't remember the call letters for the radio station, but check him out. He's doing big things, man. And uh, I'm still calling him my baby bro though. 
but he's doing good things. Out there. Okay, well, you know what? Inbox me with him because I have no, you know, I'm I'm more of a veteran now. I do more road gigs, and then I okay. I uh, I actually was the one who built a uh, nasty show at the Laugh Factory, and I nice. yeah, when they first came, you know, in Chicago, it's just a fishbowl. You can't. You can't yeah. just walk in here and do what you want to. You got to be right. blessed in. So they they was doing, uh, here's my favorite. I talk about it. They, they brought Jamie Kennedy in and gave him a $7,500 uh, minimum and a half door deal or a full door deal or something. 30 people showed up. So they lost their shirt. And they kept doing that. Oh. You know they was finna close. They was, they, they was losing their shirt so bad they was finna close. Well, I got a fraternity. I'm a Kappa. So I kept doing Kappa events and it kept making, making it able for them to pay their bills. And then Jamie jumped all over me. He gave me, he gave me the, the Saturday 1030. I promoted it for four years straight. The shit got big, powerful. Then nice. I fell out with the chick who, uh, who was managing it, who got moved into the position. She, and, uh, and she, she found a way to get me off of that show. And it's crazy, bro. But crazy? my return is April 30th. And I'm gonna put I'm gonna kill that motherfucker. That's what's up. Tell That's what's up. It's, so, yeah. Isn't that crazy though? How they'll they'll just give money to people and and then when you earn in the money, they have a hard time giving you the money that you earning. It's yeah, crazy. man. It's weird. It's a weird business we in, you know what I mean? Yeah, they, you know, they thought like uh like if they was bringing in Jamie Foxx. Then them 350 seats would have been sold. Mm -hmm. But you it's a certain marketing you gotta have in Chicago. Now they know it. Now they know how to do it. Yeah. I take credit for some of that. That's what's up. You should. You, you should. Know? So so uh, you know, it's all good. My relationship with Curtis, the guy who there now is, yeah. is is getting is getting to the point where we could really make some money later together. But yeah. uh man, I would love to be able to do a show where you come up here. You know what I mean? Well, and, definitely. Uh, do your thing either there or the Lincoln Lodge is also hot. We, you okay. you familiar with the Lincoln Lodge no. in Chicago? Okay. No, no. That's another one that's solid. Riddles, you know Riddles where D I know Riddles. Riddles. It's came back, but Damon Williams is in charge. Of oh, you know okay. Yeah, he he yeah. he actually making it work. You know what I'm saying? So okay. three places you should be, man. And and, and uh, I be seeing people posting stuff about uh about Zanies too. Oh, Zanies has opened the doors. You know, back when, well, when you started, it was, it burst. It was but Zanies was, you know, they had one black person per every three months back yeah. then. And they, and they didn't even want to pay that black person. Exactly. Hey. So now they got some different cats up there. One of them is an old road comic, this cat named Brian Hicks. So he a little open. He knows what it's about. Okay. So that would be a place for you, too. Yeah, I like that. I like that room. Um, I, I, I for like a hot second, I thought about shooting my uh my special there because yeah. I just like the acoustics of it. It was you know narrow, oh, yeah. small, and it looks good, you know, on camera right. and stuff. So, now they yeah, got man. they got all the video work to it too. So man, hit them up and say, man, maybe you and your you know your partner could come up there and do a uh, do y'all podcast, broadcast so, it, whatever you know y'all do, man. It's a, it's open a little bit more. Okay. Uh, so yeah, those are the top food chains besides the improv and Schomburg.